you you didn't come across as a politician who aimed to be a politician. So when you jumped into politics, mm. what was your ambition then? At what age did you join PAS? Well, it was, it was a long story, but to, to, uh, to cut the, everything short, the, uh, you know, at the age of the student movement during the student days in schools, uh, I was in the uh, School of Science, Trangano Sesma, right. one of the premier schools in Trangano at that time. We only have two, three schools in Trangano, which are uh, under scholar, uh, the boarding school, Sesma, Science Rungun, and MRSM. And being in that school, which is the closest to Rusila, I still remember in the, in the uh, 1980s, early of uh, 80s, uh, 85, that was the, the era of uh, uh, Togo Hajjadi era in Rusila. So I was part of the community of the students in the, my student days who, uh, who go to Rusila every now and then, especially weekend. So that, that was my first exposure to the to the to, to pass the basically but nothing formal yet and after that when i uh, entered university in uk of course i joined pass as a ordinary member one of the uh, yeah ordinary member i can't remember the uh, exact year but i think i believe it was 1988 sorry 89 yeah that was the time when i joined pass as a an ordinary member and that's everything started from there together with the students uh, movement and, and every now and then we had uh, we go to Rusila we, we do some discussion with the uh, other other political leaders from past Did you come from a family of past members no 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 so no my yeah yeah, yeah just an ordinary folks who, who, who was a teacher my, my my father was a teacher and of course uh, he doesn't get involved in politics. Uh, he has some interest in AMNO, in Smanga Papunam at that time, but yeah, along that line, yeah, along that line. And uh, I didn't join my, my father to discuss anything about politics because my, pa my father passed away when, when I went to UKM. Mm -hmm. And in my third year of the university, he passed away. So the influence of family is very less uh, from there. Right. So that was the early, early stage when I get involved with PAS and after that, of course, you know, the early 90s, the booming of uh, PAS in Kelantan with a, uh, the, the winning of PAS in Kelantan in 1990. So your field of specialty in your education mm -mm. was had nothing to do with politics? Nothing to do with politics, nothing to do with, with uh, religion. Right. So Religious, how, yeah. Studies see what you have studied to be of benefit to where you are right now? If I can summarize everything that I've learned in the university years, and after that, of course, I, I, uh, I uh, teach in the university, uh, the, you need analytical mind and uh, problem-solving techniques in, in life and in politics when you become someone important in the state, for example, and you need that kind of uh, analytical skills and some interpersonal skills. Of course, you, people say uh, whether engineers or scientists, they have interpersonal skill or not, but you know, some way or uh, another, you, you get involved with, the, some, with the, all those uh, soft skills that you need in, in life. So I think that helps me a lot right. to solve the problem, daily problem of the states and, and others. In, politi in politics, that you are a rarity in PAS. Uh, the fact that your qualification uh, might not be, you know, such a common qualification in 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 the country as it mm -mm -mm. is. Right? In PAS, being a, a technocrat, being a scientist, mm. uh, being uh, an active uh, academic yep. at one point of time, mm -mm. Uh, even the opposition, uh, once you know you, they see you rising, they claim, "Oh, this is a." you know, someone uh, different from PAS. Mm -mm. Do you regard yourself as a rarity or is it that PAS do have people like you, mm -mm. it's not up there? Yeah, I, I think this is one of the uh, common uh, uh, 
misconception? Yeah, misconception among the publics, especially the, the, some of the people who are not get used to pass. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm not a rarity in, in pass. Uh, the, the same species who are, who are like me, we have abundance of them <laughs> in various fields, in, in, even in nuclear phys physics, in, uh, in uh, economy, in uh, all sorts of fields and they, they stay at the back. And I was part of the, the community before, who stays at the back, who helps party leaders and, and, and party uh, to strategize, to do some long-term planning for past. Uh, during, uh, I think, early 2000, when I came back from, from England. So I think you, you, you just need to uh, uh, snap your fingers and easily they come, they come uh, over and to discuss things and give you ideas. Uh, right. Did you ever want to be an elected politician? I mean, the first time you were pushed to be an adun, yeah. uh, you were not very keen. Yeah. So, did you... Yeah, I think I, I said it uh, publicly in many occasions. Uh, yeah, it wasn't my intention to get involved in politics mm -hmm. uh, per se as my position now. Even as I don't or MP, it's not in my wildest dream. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, at some point in life, you, you come across uh, people give hope for you to take up the challenge and do, do, do your part mm -hmm. in the community, to, to the state and to the nation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what, I say, what else can I say? They're part, of, part and parcel of the responsibility as a, as a Muslim uh, to, to assist uh, the community, the party, and of course, the general well-being of the country. Right. So from Adun, you have now uh, become an MB. Then you have just won the uh, what do you call member of parliament? Yeah. Uh, as the member of parliament of Kemangan, mm -mm. Uh, with an overwhelming majority. Mm. Uh, how do you feel right now? Uh, I think. Yeah, I, when I get involved in, in politics, never, in, as I said, never in my wildest dream uh, to be a don or MP because that's not uh, what I think I'm meant to be. Uh, but, you know, when you take up the position, you need to do what's your level best to do it. And uh, even, even for the MPs, uh, and then a dons and MPs, and yeah, I mean, you need to handle the GLC also in, 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 in the States. So I think um, I don't have much, cho much, much choice. Uh, I need to do my level best for all. Are you a man being pushed forward or are you a man who's pushing yourself forward at this point of time? Both, both. I mean, yeah, we have a bit of hope for other people. And then uh, with the, some motivation inside myself that, well, I, this is one of the way, one of the way I can pay back the, the society. So I take it very positively and with optimism. Right. And who do you uh, give, uh, are you grateful to uh, wife or, you know, your leaders who have pushed you so far that you are actually climbing up right now? Uh, it's quite difficult to say. I think each one of those people, they, contrib they have their own contributions. Mm -hmm. In, uh, yeah, of course, my family members, especially my children, they are very contemplating. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I think easily can, we can easily understand that because, you know, uh, at some point in their life cycle, they need to share their father mm -hmm. uh, with, uh, with the uh, general population, which is quite painful for them. But you know, they, they are also very positive on that. They, they understand the reality of the, on the ground, the reality of uh, the responsibility that I, did, uh, that I need to take up. Uh, but of course, the party itself, they are very supportive and they are the one who give uh, a strong motivations and encouragement. Uh, of course, on top of that is our, our president who give the strongest encouragement Right. And uh, at this point of time, uh, sure, sure, sir. At this point of time, uh, many have said, you know, even the opposition, even the prime minister, yeah. say that um, 
Samsuri is a very calm man. <laughs> Unlike, you know, perhaps when they compare you to uh, the other MB of Kedah. Yeah. Uh, like your friends, and Sanusi. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, maybe uh, Kelantan, yeah. past leaders, yeah. other past leaders. They say, you're very calm, you're very easy to work mm -hmm. with, you're very nice. Are you a very calm man? I don't know. I mean, I cannot give my comment to myself, but I think I, I, I am who I am. This is my character from, from the beginning. Those who know me from, this, from school days, university, university years, or even my, in my time in, when I was in, in England. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, I think they, give, they will give the same comment. Mm -hmm. that this, this is me. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't want to be... I mean, other people, they have their own ways mm -hmm. of uh, dealing and doing things and for whatever reason. So I think we need to come into reality that uh, well people people are different mm -hmm. uh, how they approach things also different right yeah okay let's go to the reality um you're now the md mm -hmm. you're now the adun mm -hmm. you're not only uh the np mm -hmm. but you're also the vp of pass mm -hmm. which is the biggest the party with the biggest number of uh, mps yeah in the country mm -hmm. um do you have enough time? Do you have enough energy to juggle these positions? Yeah, I mean, if you single out uh, to me uh, for the uh, multiple roles and uh, and responsibility, I think it goes to some some of other people also who have who become, who also the uh, vice president of their their party, Mitri Besar and MPs, mm -hmm. and uh, I think the the bottom line. Uh, throughout all, all of this is how you manage things. Mm -hmm. I would say I would prefer uh, you know you have to be smart, not not, not just hard, hard working, but also smart working. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the thing I think earlier on you asked me about mm -hmm. how my uh, background as an as, as scientists and engineers or researchers or academics uh, can assist me in mm -hmm. in my endeavor in the future i think uh, you need to plan carefully and uh work smartly are you a multitasker by nature i think so, uh, yeah i think i think that's uh that's quite normal for me for that right. for that role yeah right. and do you think um, i mean before you became an mp of kamaman mm -mm. many calls saying oh how is he going to you know be there how is he going to do the job you know so all of this um, I mean, you've been only named people, what, a couple of weeks? Yeah, so, it, well, yes, one yeah. a couple of days ago. <laughs> yeah, so do you think you could give your best? I mean, are you, I mean, you're not being a jack of all trades. Or Surely, you, sure, yeah, yeah. For every role that you have right now. Yeah, I, well, I'm, I'm not saying I'm, I'm the perfect person to do all those things. Uh, I try to be myself, that's number one. Number two, I, would, I need to work smart, mm -hmm. meaning, uh, I need to find a way how I, I can play my role uh, to do all those things uh, with a, with a uh, better result than, than before. Uh, and being an MB, uh, MB for the state that we, uh, we have 100% of the seat in the states uh, from the same party, meaning in Kemaman we have four uh, dones, for example. So all four dones, all in my all from our party, uh, um, from the same from the government, and one of them is uh, ESCO, and all government agency for the states. I mean, under my uh, purview and uh, jurisdiction. So, I think that will assist me in terms of how how can I do things uh, smartly. I mean, with all, all the tentacles that I have, with all the machinery that I have, right. yeah, I can plan. So you don't plan to be. Yeah. Just like a normal MPs who go down every day, every uh, other day. No, no. I, we, I can uh, utilize whatever machinery that we, have, we already have on the ground. Do you have a because the yeah, because the bottom line for the people is to handle their problem and issues. Mm -hmm. uh, when our adun cannot solve their problems, then I will get my ad, my adun and one of the escorts to come back to me and mm -hmm. and we try to find a way how to assist and if things not being settled, we, we try to get uh, government agencies, whether it's federal or states, it doesn't matter. Okay. Things we, which we need 
federal uh, assistance or participation, I will play my role as an MB, as an MB, and as an MP uh, in in Parliament uh, to talk to the relevant agencies directly during the parliament, parliamentary session and all that, and that will assist greatly in dealing uh, to solve the people's problem. What are your priorities as an MB uh, in Trungai? What is as a Menteri Besar of Trungai? What is your what is your main priority right now? Yeah, I, I think for that to answer that question, I always uh, people ask me uh, quite a number of uh, in a in number of occasions uh, same questions. Uh, during my first term, I, I I told them that no, I give you some uh, analogy about you know you you want you want you want to buy a house, you go and look at the house, everything so nice from the outside. Uh, you have uh, the garden is so well well trimmed and all that. And uh, it, it's and then the paint of the house is very nice, uh, looking from from afar. But when you get into the house, you see something wrong with these structures. You know, you have here and there uh, holes, and suddenly you cannot use the kitchen, and the toilet is not working, and you don't have any beds. So I have a choice whether I need to demolish everything and do uh, repeat the same process again, or I I need to. Uh, reorganize everything. So, surely I need to reorganize everything, and I need I need to prioritize which one come first. Whether the uh, the roof come first or the kitchen, whether I need to buy the the uh, the lounge safety first or beds. So that's that's the thing in in my first term. I need to do some repair on the structure first. We have uh, uh, abundance of project which has problems here and there. So my priority at that time is not just to expose, so, wow, this is a failure of this, uh, the previous government, uh, right. hanky panky from day one and all that, because that will not solve problem. That's an, become another vicious cycle. So you did away with witch hunting? Uh, yeah, witch hunting so is not my priority. My priority at that time was to, uh, to find way how we can manage well and uh, settle things in terms of the structural integrity of, of, the, of the house per se. And when come to the second term, I told my, uh, I think, uh, one or two weeks after I sworn in as a MB uh, for the second term, I call all the uh, heads of government agencies in my ESCO. We sit uh, together do some retreat, and I told them now we come to the second phase, and that's where I when I, when I coined, uh, we now we are in in uh, gear three jump from gear one to gear three to show them that this is uh, another leapfrog. It's not just one and two. One to two, gear one to gear two is just normal. So nothing extraordinary. So gear one to gear three, which means you need to step up your your process. So I told them we need to uh, step up everything on the process uh, to get investors and uh, things like that. And, uh, and all the things uh, we need to find uh, um, extra income for the state to reduce our dependency on uh, petroleum oil royalty, and we achieved that in, the, in my first term, where we we can reduce three to four, four percent dependency. Of course, not much, but at least somewhere we have some some planning. So we, I told them we need to enhance our uh, tax, uh, our collection of of uh, tax, uh, local tax, the, those PBTs, and then uh, th we need to increase. Uh, to uh, uh, look at, look at, looked at at our tables of uh, minerals where we can increase the uh, the the rate, for example, to get more uh, revenue, and and some of them is is long overdue. To, to, it uh, yeah, we are working on that now, and so you're in the second phase right now. Yeah, in the second phase, and in second still phase. in the second phase. And then, uh, in fact, next week, uh, my uh, PTG, the Pengarahan and Galian, they, they, they will uh, will sit down and look at the the numbers, uh, how much we can uh, increase our revenue uh, by uh, playing around with our uh, rate and and all that. And then uh, we have uh, I want to get more revenue from uh, the green initiatives. Uh, the green uh, hydrogen, the uh, and I had some discussion with uh, President Petronas, 
to explore things and you know even I went to meet um, Premier of Sarawak uh, to look at things that we can learn from them and probably participate in their green initiative. So this is one of the things that we are exploring and I hope, uh, well, of course, it's not, it's not going to be easy, but of course, at least we do uh, something and yeah, hopefully within a short time we can see the results. Okay, very much in plans. Yeah, okay. and ongoing, ongoing, yeah. On the ground, mm. I mean, Trungano, with all its riches, uh, you know, it is still considered one of the poorest states mm -hmm. when you talk about uh, income per capita, when you talk about economy uh, contribution to, to the federal mm. community. Yeah. So, how are you going to change that image? I mean, you have all the, in Blueprint, it's pretty nice. Yeah, correct. How are you going to work with a with a uh, state that has, you know, almost not done anything for decades. And on top of that, you came in during the 1MDB saga. So. All right. Yeah, I think this is one of the uh, things that we need to uh, uh, get it settled. It's not just in the state of Trangano, but need to communicate with the federal agencies. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, when you mentioned about the poorest state in, in the country, and if you look at, well, in terms of uh, household uh, disposable income, for example, I mean, we still keep, I can show you some numbers or from Dawson uh, statistics, which shows that uh, we are not doing that, that bad. We are improving in terms of uh, yeah, growth, GDP, or in terms of uh, unemployment rate, which is keep on reducing. I have some numbers I, I can share with you. But the bottom line is, you know, if you look at, let's say, disposable income in the state of Trangano, let's say you just plug in some numbers, let's say 2,000 they earn in Trangano, it will not be the same as when you earn 2,000 in Putrajaya or in Selangor, in Penang, in Perak. Uh, the, uh, the poverty in the, in the city, uh, I think it's much, yeah, much worse than the poverty in the, uh, uh, outside the city. So, yeah, so possibly, in terms of number, yes, their disposable income is very, uh, un comes under the preview of uh, poverty or M40 or whatever, B40. But with, with the same uh, living standard they live in Trangano, right. as compared to the living, how they live in, in the... In, in, so the, in, so the, the, the bottom line is the, which one is more prosperous for them? Right. Uh, I'll give you an, another example. You know, if you look at people who, who are working here, they earn 3,000 ringgit, for example. Might not be enough for them and, and their family, but 3,000 ringgit in Trangano, okay. yeah, it's a lot. Uh, number one. Number two, those who are living in here, they don't have any assets. Th things like, I mean, uh, house, house or land. But those who are living in Trangano, working in Trangano, they get a piece of land, they have they get uh, their own house, uh, the renter is not that expensive. So, but when, when the economy does go up, whatever that we have here, that might apply there as well, right? I mean, for now it might be enough, but yeah. as you said, you intend to develop Trungano, then the urbanization... Of course, of course, that's, that's what we are, we are doing now. Uh, what I mean on that... For now. Yeah, for now. What I mean for that is that, is that the... Um, and the the prosperity index for them, for the people, those who live in Trangano, whether even though their number, the numbers of their me, median income, for example, falls below the the uh, the, uh, the other part of the country, but they, they feel more happy, and uh, it's different. I mean, similarly it goes to other states. For so I give you, look at other index. yeah, in under index as well. Do, uh, same goes to, for example, I give you an example, an example of Sarawak, for example. One of the, I think it's not one, but they are the richest mm -hmm. state in the country. They have their own uh, savings of forty-five billion right. in the coffers, mm -hmm. and yet if you look at the numbers of the poverty, this, it doesn't reflect well on their wealth. Right. They, 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 they have. Yeah, even the budget for, for Sarawak, for example, 10 billion, 10 billion, 12 billion. But they still have uh, people. When, when I spoke to uh, uh, 
the premier, he explained about, well, the people in Sarawak, even though they are, he gave the same explanation to me. Uh, they earn probably about 1,005, but they have 10 acres of uh, right. land, they are working on that, and then they, do, do need, they don't... Spend the money. They, they don't spend the money, yeah. In fact, some of them, they don't pay tax, for example. So when they, do, when they don't pay tax, I mean, the, res, the, uh, the record, mm -hmm. it, doesn't, it, it doesn't show that, you know. So on paper... On paper, know? yes. Yeah. But in reality, there's another thing that we need to explore. So th this is one of the things that in one of the me a meeting between Chief Minister and Premier with the uh, Prime Minister, I still remember during the I, mean the, I think the first meeting when the PHPN government uh, was formed in, in November. Uh, this is the thing, uh, when Prime Minister explained about the needs to have a mm -hmm. uh, centralized uh, statistic and data system to look at. So that for once and for all, we, our, the, num the uh, we know about the general well-being of the people. We need to have a, a cross a department, cross agencies, yeah, between the LHDN and other 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 uh, government agencies. This is this is one of the role of that uh, initiative to, uh, to finalize what's the real data on the ground. Yeah, what's the real one? So the P forty applied in Putrajaya. I mean, it doesn't really. It doesn't work. really. It doesn't really reflect, it doesn't really reflect the B40s in in Trangano, right. for that matter. So yeah. the B40 in Trangano might be, you know, top M40. Yeah, might be probably in terms of uh, household household income or the, their median income, uh, not that much, but their well-being, their prosperity is, is much better. Right. But all this while you, you keep hearing. Mm. Uh, the ruling parties, uh, you know, your opposition, yeah. telling, uh, you know, Trungano and Kwantan, they dispose. Yeah, the poorest, poor, poorer, poorer and under, under, underdeveloped, because, under, yeah. Because of past. Yeah. Because of past people are so happy. <laughs> like you said, they're happy with what they have. Yeah. So how do you answer that? Yeah, I think it's, it's not going to be easy because you're dealing with a push and pulling factor. We try to push everything up so that people can see, but they are, on the other side, they are, they are, they are keep on uh, 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 pushing, pushing it out. Yeah, surprise it, surprise it. I give, I give you a, uh, another example. You know, during the uh, PRK Pelangai, for example, I never been to, never been to Pelangai or Ber Bera before in my life. So when I had, I had a chance uh, to visit uh, Bera, 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 how, how do you pronounce it, or Pelangai, it struck my mind. This is the, the uh, consistency of the former prime minister. Right. Yeah, it's my Sabri Bera, Bera, and he was the MP there for since ages. Mm -hmm. And the consistency of Pelangai belongs to the uh, previous Menteri Besar. I had no prob no qualms and no problem with the uh, Tuknan or whoever. This this was the consistency of him for so long. But why Pelangai and Bera? As compared to Kuala Barang, and let's say the poorest in in Terengganu is uh, Telamau, for example, it's not. Lebih kurang. Lebih kurang. I think we are better than better than them. Okay. Yeah. Right. I mean, Bera and Kuala Barang, for example, we have good numbers of banks and petrol station. But if you go to Bera, you hardly get easily. I mean, at night time is uh, it's, it's dark completely. So, and it start my mind that wow, and they keep on saying. We are the poorest, we are the underdeveloped, but in reality, it's not that. So we need to have more uh, pushing factors to show it away, to show, get them come and look at for themselves. And I, I think in the last uh, one or two months, when in one occasion, someone uh, stopped me, a lady, definitely from, definitely from KL, and he told me how misled uh, the uh, propaganda on Trangganu mm -hmm. when he heard about when she heard about the uh, that the Trangga, Trangganu is underdeveloped and all that he, she never been to Trangganu uh, which is funny enough and she went there and, and then come back and she, she said totally different than the uh, misconception and the propaganda yeah. so it's propaganda yeah propaganda so right. it's a, yeah it's a bit unfair mm -hmm. uh, and biased statement for, for the 
uh, for them to say that. Yeah. What about the people themselves? I mean, when you go to Kuantan, mm. then you see the people are very laid back, yeah. relaxed. Yeah. Know? I mean, uh, you're looking at people who are not bothered to, uh, you know, do things. But yeah. the minute they leave to KL, yeah. Putrajaya, the biggest number besides Sarawak, yeah. Sarawakians are Kuantanese. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Mm -mm. Top civil servants, mm -mm. and then you have top performing Kantanese yeah. all over the world. Yeah. Uh, why? What is this with this attitude that when you go out of the and space, then you just suddenly you, you suddenly become some you someone else? Yes. Yeah. 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 I think of course I can I, I can answer on behalf of my uh, Kantan counterpart. Mm -hmm. What about Trinidad? Oh, what, but I mean, if I can give a general comment on that, I I don't think it's about the location they, they are they are whether they are in Trigano, Klantan or Kedah or uh, wherever but it's rather the personality the personality the attribute of the individuals those who, who possible possibly those who, who, who keep on staying there because I want to live in the laid back societies I don't want to uh, hasten myself to any hassle I don't want to do that to do that I just want to be, barely survive because that Keep me happy, and for those who who, who think they want to uh, get more challenge outside and uh, and then gain more, for example, then so it's rather the personality of the that individual, and this is one of the things that I think I I'm playing my role from day one and up to now to change the mindset of the, of our people in Trungano. Uh I give you an example. I met the uh, one of the Kropo Leko. Uh, uh, producer, uh, the small uh, at the back of his house, and uh, when uh, our our government government agencies that deal with the entrepreneur, they uh, talk to them and say, you know, we can assist you in to do some uh, nice packaging, yeah, expansions, and then uh, you can uh, export it to other part of the countries, and this is from some numbers you get another numbers of uh, wealth, for example. The the answers is struck up, struck me very well. You know, he said, "Why should I? This is it's already good for me. I, I don't want to. I mean, the more you you earn, there will be more other things that you yeah you make your head, your 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 mind headache and and so forth so forth. But when I I talk to them nicely, I said, I I I ask the person, do you have your your children who are uh, continuing your your business after after you pass away, or some someone you can transfer the uh, business, they say, or oh, of course not. They are not interested in in doing all this kerpot leko processing of the fish, uh, raw fish, and all that. But when I told them, okay, look at the perspective of having a nice air condition and uh, a mechanized computerized uh, system. In your your small factories, do you think your your son who are who is also graduate will come back and and do their their part? And the answer from the parent, the father, the the, the owner, sorry, wait, yes, of course. Then we told them, so your your expansion is not about yourself alone. This is about the general well-being of the business and continuity of the business. So this is one of the things that we need to. Up open up their mind and this is keep on going and going it's not just we re just realized in, in the uh, last couple of years but i think this is all yeah for whatever reason it keep on on going for, for the last so the many many years radar, you, you know? yeah yeah possibly they they, they understand it diff different with a different way in, in Trangano and in so in KL. We are, yeah we bring a different meaning okay. being a person who never served or work in Trangano even one day before prior to my MB. Right. I don't have any working experience even one day okay. before. Be right. So you're looking MB. at it with a different. So I I bring it back some uh, progressive and different cultures right. to inculcate uh, themselves. It's not going to be easy because as you I, I think you are you are all aware that mindset changes the most difficult things. Right. Easy to. To build, to plan for infrastructure rather than the mindset of the people. But mm. as a leader, I, I, I see that myself as, as a leader. As, yeah. So the mindset change is what 
you know, the most difficult part of the job. Most difficult part of the job. And I think rarely the politicians who really depend on the votes will, do, will take up the challenge because right. that will impact mm -hmm. their right. popularity. Sometimes you need to do things which is not very popular. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Right. But you have to do it right. for the sake of uh, mindset change. But of course, you need to engage and see to balance it, to balance a little bit, and yeah, here and there, take yeah, some. What is your priority in Trinano mm. right now? Okay, I mean, what is your area of focus right now? You have been talking about developing, okay, change of mindset, yeah. developing the uh, maybe the infrastructure, but at this point of time, what is your main focus? Which which area you really feel that this term, I have to develop it? We have five years, okay? okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, it's already, in a, uh, it's already four months, right? Uh, but basically, uh, we, need, we need to plan for five years, whether it's going to be me or somebody else is another, another story. Uh, I have a short-term and long-term or mid-term uh, objective that we need to achieve. What is your short term? Uh, short term, I need to settle those uh, issues with the uh, oil royalty, which is not being paid by the, by the federal government. That's number one on the table for me. But of course, at the same time, I think I want to push really uh, hard on the investor to come and invest in Trangano. Right. In various, it's not just petrochemical, but in other part, other things also, in, in, in biotech, in, in uh, some other manufacturing, because that will give more, more jobs. Because the... Uh, the problem with the um, new industry, with the AIs and Internet of Things, is it's very, very unique. In, in the past, in the, in 50, 15 years ago, 50, 20 years ago, you have the investment of 100 million that create uh, 500 jobs. But now, 100 million may create only 50, 50 jobs. Uh, and then you need to, uh, uh, to, to teach your people the right yet to grab the opportunity. It's not just job per se, but any opportunity that circling the economic uh, right. uh, cycles of uh, factory or whatever industry that we, that, that are, we are bringing in. That's that's why I'm, uh, what I'm doing now. And of course, to to increase the green initiatives. I'm my my masters in combustion and energy. Right. The energy part really dwell into myself. That well, I need to push really for the green energy. So that Tangano become uh, not to say better than the uh, model. yeah, I made mean the model a good model right. that pass rule government. So have you got biotech investment? Like yeah, we already have. We already have in Tangano CJ Bio and some other things in Kerte, mm -hmm. but we keep on uh, looking. But I have a good ex good relation with the uh, federal government, right. with Miti, Maida, and uh, ECR. So I think that works well with uh, my planning. And um, my, my ESCO also understand well their yeah. Yeah, 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 responsibility. When you're talking about biotech, when you're talking about uh, bringing in AI and uh, IoT, we, we are talking about connection. Correct. Which Trungano is really you know, far from. Uh, we are not to say far, I would rather use the word struggling. <laughs> <laughs> because you still have not, I mean, these companies, they don't yeah. even in. You know, even in normal semiconductor, mm -mm. you would need in Sundaya, you need five G. Correct. But this is we are talking about, you know, uh, a place where the infrastructure is very poor. So mm -mm. How are you going to manage that when, let's say, foreign companies come in and they say, "Look, you don't have five G. How are we going to run the uh, the machines?" Yeah. So how, uh, you not know? to say that we are very choosy on the investor, but that want to invest but of course we have some priority I mean in terms of agriculture and then uh, well we can manage we, we stick wing the uh, petrochemicals but some other part but but possibly not some electronic industry because that the uh, we need to to have uh, different models of infrastructures ready for the semiconductors or electronic industries uh, even though the uh, electronic industries they have more uh, labor intensive compared to right. some, some, to others, and this is one of the things that I, I I think in one occasion I I commented on the uh, uh, industrial revolution 4.0 and IoT. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, the 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 the, the, uh, the group of people who coin these things, they have uh, they have issues in the West. For example, uh, it's difficult for them to get uh, workers. As for example, like in in England, in in Britain, after the Brexit, they are struggling with uh, foreign workers uh, to get the workers, and they don't have any other option. They need mechanized and computerized everything. And uh, in America, for example, if you, you you need to employ people to work in your industries, the uh, the rules, the regulations, the workers' union so-called laws is very strict. So those uh, China, company from China who, who, who want to in, wanted to invest in America, in Detroit, for example, uh, there, there was one, one uh, documentary in Netflix explaining about one of the big industries in China and they want to move into Detroit for whatever strategic reason. They are struggling and finally they said this is uh, cost them dearly mm -hmm. because the nature of the, the uh, Union in, in America. So, for that particular reason, those developed countries, they don't have any other option. They need to move quickly on IoT and IR 4.0. And we cannot sim assimilate ourselves compared to them. We still uh, need to get our people to, to, to be employed. Our infrastructures ready infrastructures for for the internet for the uh, connectivity of 5g still struggling uh it's not just Nogado, but i mean some other part of the country also and sabah and sarawak is in 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 uh, the, the uh, different uh, condition so we need to balance iot of 5.0 yes but at the same time what happened to our people do you foresee that uh, once you develop you bring in this kind of uh, you know uh, industries do you foresee those Tringanu people who have left the state to will come back will come back of course of course and uh, i think i'm not sure i will, i have the data with me but the migration out percentage of migration out uh, is not increasing oh, okay. in the past uh, couple of years so it's, it's a good sign that people want to stay back and, 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 and work in Trangkano. Okay. Um, coming back to yourself as the spokesman of SG4, because... I'm not an official yeah, spokesman, yeah, official but... Spokesman. <laughs> but you are the voice of... Okay, SG4 okay, right you, you, you can take it that way, yeah. So, you keep saying SG4, SG4. Yeah. Not many people seem to understand Correct. what it is. And they, they know Tun is the advisor or official mm -hmm. advisor. But what is SG4? How do you explain? Even your past people don't understand what is SG4. Yeah. Well, this is something new. We never had this kind of uh, initiatives uh, in our country before. But we have seen at the uh, uh, world stage of D7 and we have NAM for whatever purpose of that uh, entity we have. Uh, ASEAN, I mean the, the original uh, hooking up of, of countries in ASEAN, they have certain objectives they want to achieve. So as far uh, for, for, the, for the four governments in the state, in Malaysia, Perlis, Kedah, Kelantan and Terengganu, we have different uh, challenges that we need to, to, to take, especially the, uh, because, you know, we consider ourselves as an opposition state. Even though we already have uh, the uh, everything's being spelled out in, in our constitutions mm -hmm. of the rule of the federal the power of the jurisdiction of federal mm -hmm. the sharing power between state and federal if i mean if everybody follows go by the constitution mm -hmm. things will not be so uh, messy these days but you know because of politics right. you tend to have some is discriminatory. I mean, quote unquote, is discriminatory feeling towards a state which is not un under the same gov federal government. And this is one of the things that to, I, I have said many times. This is another vision cycle that we need to uh, to uh, re reduce. Otherwise, our country won't prosper. If you look at examples of the uh, developed nation, developed country, when it comes to any, at the end of the election, any general election, they, they, they can work much better than what we are having in, in Malaysia. So because of that and some motivation that 
the, we have some disparity between states. I mean, they have different challenges. I mean, Kedah, Kelantan, with the different geographical locations and they have to work on their own. yeah, their own. And then some state they have uh, advantage on certain things. Some they are they have uh, yeah too much politicking with the federal things like that. So we come to the bottom line that we need to work together. How do we work together? In, our, in what capacity? So that's where comes the idea of SG4. So, in fact, the, uh, it, it, it comes with the, some philosophical yeah, structures at the beginning because this is something new and it, we need to explain to our people, our leaderships. And uh, this process goes back and forth. I mean, Ton went to all the uh, four states and discuss, we discuss things and then uh, we suggest some uh, the structures and, uh, and, and then uh, back and forth with Tone and with uh, some other state. And finally, Alhamdulillah, yesterday, no, no, on uh, Sunday, we had a past leadership meeting and uh, we have presented the, uh, the structures and Alhamdulillah, everything is accepted. Now, come to the, uh, uh, we can move forward with our, our structures between, uh, because, you know, you need to understand, it's not just political, it's, it's not political initiatives, it's, uh, it's a government initiative, so we need to get all civil servants to get involved. The uh, UPEN or the GLCs, SEDC uh, state, SEDC uh, to get uh, involved. So it's not we 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 have to depart from the old way of doing things to the new new way. So it, that's why the early stage of the development is is uh, looks not that small, but we are we are we are doing it now. So you felt that working as one state to federal is not working. I mean, it's not challenging. We have yeah, certain. It's difficult. It's, it's quite it's tough. Really yeah. Really listening yeah. to just Trunganus. Yeah, to yeah. Them. Even though I would stress out and point out very clearly, with a full clarity, that we don't have any problem with any government yeah, agency. I mean, you don't have a problem, but your voice is a little bit. Small. A little bit small. A little, a little bit, you know. So in, in all states, your voice. Yeah, we have to work together. together. A big entity, and we have we have to work together so to achieve the objective. Uh -huh. We are we are not here to challenge the the current entity they already have in the uh, federal. federal. It, but let's say we, we we look at the examples of the uh, try to get the investors coming in. We know the role of PT, Maida, ECR, and all that. The current role by any entity they already. That exist in Brazil. No politics there. No, nothing on on politics. Even though when, even when Tun went to um, Terengganu, Kelantan, Kedah, and uh, Perlis, we never discussed about politics. Purely how to get things done and how we can get the investors coming uh, as quickly as possible. And evidently, there are numbers, good numbers of investors who already in, in talking terms with Tone and he already passed the name to me and I already talked to my people sometime next week or next week. I need to call them all together to discuss things and to find ways how we can assist them to invest in Terengganu. What kind of uh, investments are you looking at right now? For the time being, anything. Anything, anything that interests them, right. and we want to do it uh, much. Uh, it's quicker than the, the, in, the, in my previous term. There are many that uh, want to come in, but they are hesitant because you are past mm. or you are Islamist parties, uh, you know, or mm -mm. Malay-based parties. So, are these? I mean, are there you know certain conditions? Perhaps maybe Sharia. Uh, only Sharia-based industries, or do, do you have conditions on what kind of industries can come into this SG4 states? Yeah, of course, the industry which is uh, f f falls under Hara, for example, like the, like the oh. alcohols and all that, it's not it's out of questions. Other than that, we can discuss and find ways. I think it's more on the perceptions, negative uh, perceptions because of uh, uh, a long history of bias and prejudice uh, being laid down to, to the state under past rules for whatever reason but where I don't want to go into that historical uh, background but from now on we want to move forward that's why we yeah that's why we we, we increase the, our capacity to engage with our, with those people including the uh, diplomats from Korea from Japan and explain to them and they are also 
feel comfortable to get their companies to talk to us and so on. I think it's not going to be a one and overnight process, but with a uh, full uh, planning and and with the with the, with the, uh, the advancement of uh, social media, that will assist us compared to in the last ten or fifteen years ago. Do you have any FD, FDIs in hand already? Uh, for the 2023, yes, we have. I, I, I have a number, I pass okay. to you. All right. Okay, what about the people? Are they ready to see this influx of industries coming in? I mean, for the people of Trangano. They wake up jobs for them, you know? Yeah, I mean, I, they are ready, they are ready, yeah. The, the people? The people are so excited when, when every time we uh, posted in the... Most people, easy people. I think so. I think they're just like any ordinary people. <laughs> We're just like any ordinary people. Nothing fancy about us, nothing uh, extraordinary. I mean, this is, this is some kind of uh, uh, prejudice which has been uh, clouded their judgment for so long. And we are here. Uh, with, this is one of my, my role as a VP of PAS to, uh, to break up the cloud of that. Uh, negative perceptions. Okay. So past is okay. Let's go to past. Past has, you know, seems to be evolving. There seems to be an evolution of past. You don't look like the mullah. You don't have the beard. Did I? <laughs> you don't. You don't wear the robe. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, you don't wear the what do you call the kopia, Yeah. Uh, which has been painted as this is the past. Mm -mm. Um, but the word Islamist party still strikes fear among businessmen, mm -mm. among non Muslims yeah. uh, in the country, as you said, due to a long history of propaganda. Yeah, yeah. So how do you intend to dispel that fear? Yeah, it's a long history. It's not just for Malaysia because, you know, they look, they look at other part of the world and they equate ourselves to other, other people from other part of the world, which is 100% very wrong. They have different issues and different uh, problems at their respective uh, countries. We have, we understand the, the structural uh, of Malaysia. We understand that we are, we are consist of uh, multiple uh, ethnics. Uh, possibly if you compare to other parts of the world, we are the most... Relaxed Islamic. Yeah, relaxed Islamic. We have the most uh, uh, multiple uh, ethnics in our, in our country. So we realize that and we cannot get away from that. The only things now is we, we need to get ourselves, we need to engage ourselves. We cannot run away from that. I mean, as far as past is concerned, we need to get ourselves and explaining this to our leaders and mid level leaders and to past members that so that they, they need to think we are, we are at the central stage now. We are no more or merely a, a small. Kampo party, a small, merely political party. We are. We come to the. We come. We, we we come this far, and we need to move forward. This is one of my role. This, I said this to them many many times in many occasions. So this is ongoing process to deal with uh, our people, our past members, and to the publics who are very skeptic on past. I, I we, we couldn't uh, blame blame them. And uh, the engagement process keep on going, going, and with the help, uh, with the, help, with the uh, helps of our 43 MPs, we try to, uh, yeah, step up whatever things we can do to reduce the tensions and uh, reduce the negativ negativity. Do you see a sort of okay, while you are trying to open up yeah. the past minds. Uh, is there a backlash from the past people themselves, you know, who uh, maybe not from the outside, but, you know, from inside, from inside the older, older generation? Uh, I would say we are not perfect. Mm -hmm. the, all the past member, we come from various background. I mean, those who have never been to uh, never been exposed to uh, how to to govern a country. Govern uh, uh, this is very new to them. It's not, it's not that, uh, and we are very homogeneous. Meaning to say, there are here and there we hear, we, we hear we heard uh, some comment and all that. But I think it's not. It's, it's just a minority minority uh, f uh, discontent feeling. Uh, 
that we are we are hearing but i think we are managing well because the top leaders understand very well and this is one of the role of the to our top leader our president right and the fear that you know you might become talibans mm. you might become like you say they compare you uh, they compare the past, past with taliban with other islamist yeah. uh, for example maybe the brotherhood in egypt uh, the what you call talibans in afghanistan or even for example uh, you know the 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 so made up so called made up uh, islamist in mm. uh, india or pakistan yeah. so do you think that uh, there is a possibility of us coming up as a modern islamic party surely surely i would say surely but in our ways mm -hmm. that's why uh, generalizing our past with mm -hmm. other entity from outside the country whether it's Taliban or Muslim Brotherhood it's, it's totally wrong uh, this this is one of the negative perception that we are we we keep on uh, having for a long time and uh, we know ourselves in, in, in Malaysia the complexity of past in Malaysia and I think we are uh, we understand well that mm. right but well, what about uh, you know the ruling parties i mean you have the current ruling party okay they, they have worked with us they have dp who has worked with us mm. but then fell out because of their non-agreement to do non-agreement in islamic state but uh, you know but the uh, past has said uh, you know it's now has always said that we are not for a secular country yeah and of course that is being played against you mm. so how, how is past going to move forward with all that propaganda? Of course, we need to strategize, and this is one of the things that we, uh, we need to engage people, mm -hmm. get the uh, uh, other uh, the NGOs, uh, councils of uh, eminent people, the, I mean, those who are the professors from the university to get involved with, uh, to go back to the, uh, the very basis of how we, Malaysia has been formed. Right. Based on our constitution, that Islam is the federal religion, and other other religion can be exercised freely in our country. Based on that, clearly shows that Islam is a very important part of our country. And how do we portray and uh, uh, inculcate Islam in in our in, in Malaysia? Of course, we have we we need to understand the sensitivity and all that. So I think that will uh, the engagement uh, will be uh, keep on going. So. My my advice to the, those people who are who have some uh, yeah worriness on that. I think we are we are in the, in the different phase now. Okay. Yeah. Have you has past put aside Hudud and Islamic State to uh, achieve the success? Of, of course not. Of course not. But of course, when we, we need to lay down on the table the priority, mm -hmm. we might have let's say hundred things that. that become, uh, Things that we want to we want to have in for, for Malaysia. I mean, similarly to other party, mm -hmm. similarly to other group, mm -hmm. but we need to prioritize which one, which one come first, and things which is very sensitive. Then we need to engage mm -hmm. and explain. If it's not uh, work well, then we take more time. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Is federal constitution still supreme to us? Yeah, of course. Federal, federal constitution is already there, laid down. Of, uh, since uh, our independence, so we we are working. On, we are de we depend on that. Mm -hmm. Right. So there is this fear that once past, uh, you know, plays this modern uh, what do you call this perceived road, and mm -hmm. when we actually get to the top, suddenly the hudud and Islamic State will come down. Uh, you know, in the form of uh, past running it. As yeah, a, I think that fear. What is that? There won't be any well as is as it is now. If you look at the numbers of seats in parliament, there's no possibility of us to have to rule by our own. We need to work with others. Right. So when we, when we have to work with others, then yeah, discussions, meetings, uh, uh, give and take with other group of people, it's very become a very important things to do. So the fear for that. For that, the the, the uh, whatever on the, the top objective, uh, I think it's very unfounded. Yeah.
Okay. What about DAP? Are you willing? You said you can't yeah. work with others. Uh, you need to. But what about DAP? Would you be able to work with DAP? We need to. Yeah, we need to, yeah, we need to differentiate between personal relations with uh, party relations. As for party relations, we don't have any any dealing with uh, with the AP and I'm no at the moment. As far as the party is concerned, but in in terms of our our personal relation, then it's keep on ongoing. I had I don't have any problem personally with uh, leaders of the AP or leaders of uh, yeah, leaders of of AMNO. Right. And uh, politics is very dynamic, mm -hmm. I would say. Uh, who, whoever, who would dream? Mm -hmm. I'm not work with uh, PKR one day or even the AP one day. Right, right. And uh, yeah, you cannot close the uh, the uh, possibility. If, for example, I give you the scenario. Let's say the AP toned down a little bit on certain things, which yeah. were very. Uh, uh, acceptable to us, that, that, that there will be things. Past had with the yeah, we, we worked with the AP before, yeah. okay. but if we are talking about now, at this point, no, no. no. Okay. As mm. long as they are opposing, they are opposing whatever, yeah, things which is a, a detriment mm -hmm. to the general majority of the people of Malaysia. Right, is Pons <laughs> ready to be uh, the head of the government, federal uh, government? The head you're talking, you're talking about taking over Putrajaya under PN. Under PN, yeah. why not? Why not? But of course, we we work as PN mm -hmm. rather than pass mm -hmm. uh, as a single party. Mm -hmm. So whatever it is, we need to discuss in PN council for that. Right, and you have been painted as the PM in waiting. You know, uh, the Prime Minister himself said, "Oh, I'm sorry, it's now maybe the Prime Minister in waiting. Possible now, people are looking at." Uh, a possible candidate from past uh, in the form of you mm. to be the prime minister, mm -hmm. the next prime minister. Do you foresee that? Because prior to this, past has never had any inclination to become the prime minister. I mean, Tan Sri Muhyiddin also said that during your uh, election the campaign period. Yeah. yeah. If I have, I have a choice, my own choice, I would say no. I don't have the quality to become whatever you you said just now. If uh, people ask me, I have a choice. No, no I say no. Mm -hmm. Give to other people. Well, it's very big responsibility. Is pass as a party ready to be a PM's party? Sure. You have to when time comes. When the time comes. When the time comes. Next government. I don't know. <laughs> Difficult to answer. <laughs> oh, all right. Okay. All right. Okay. So basically, for now, no. Uh, I'm no and DAP. There is no working with between parties. As for now, mm -hmm. but of course we keep on co try to communicate with Amno, and you see what happened when mm -hmm. the our deputy president said that we are we we are we we can open our door to discuss, and suddenly. The president of Hamna said differently with a quite harsh word. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And what? Well, that's what happened now. Right. Uh, but the last question, Muafakat uh, National, you were one of the main pushers. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We 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 will keep on trying. Yeah, we're still there. We, the uh, the leader of Muafakat National per se as uh, an NGO now is Tansri Anwar Musa. He's a past member, central committee uh, members, and this is a never-ending story, never-ending endeavor to push for all the Malays, regardless of their background, to come together and right. yeah, and uh, for once and for all, we need to work together. Of course, people have different view in terms of politics. We can cop we can keep the politics at bay for that, at each of the, those people. But the bottom line is, we, for the Muslim, for the Malays, we need to work together right. 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 to to get a common objectives. Right. What about getting the non-Malays on board? Of course, more like national core uh, charters just to focus uh, on the Malay and Muslims, but. As I said, we, we understand the reality check of, the, of our country. We have a vast 
uh, background of the society comes from different ethnics, different religion. Yeah, we 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 got to live with it. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. Sure.